again, he's got two hands to, to, to do that. It's, it's a little bit more dynamic, so it should be in a little bit. Uh, you know, if I was doing it one-handed, um, but he's got two hands and his shoulders and mm. stuff like that, so it's, it's a bit more dynamic. I understand Andy's more controlled approach, and, mm. and it would be more... Um, well, it is more successful, but, <laughs> 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 but, for, but I couldn't Not replicate that because yeah. I'd have to get more, uh, get better, get practice it, get better at it. It's easier for me to sit down mm -hmm. and achieve my hands. But even with, when he's using his two hands, he still doesn't really use the track. He doesn't let it down the track. He just does it all on the sheet. Well, we'll probably, it really blow you when the track's just down, to be honest, because it, oh, right. because when you when you, when it's pulled in, it's, that's about as tight as it goes. We've probably got the jib out a little bit as well and the, yeah. the jib tracks back a little bit so everything's kind of opened up a bit and mm -hmm. again my style is to sail a little bit um, you know a little bit more off the wind mm -hmm. but is that similar to what you do Stuart? Um, not really <laughs> <laughs> well um, uh, I, I find the track so short that um, I tend to set it you know if, if you're if you're get, getting gusts, I don't tend to um, react first with the helm. Well, I do a bit, but um, it's mainly if you get hit by a gust, you, you want to drop the main immediately and, um, Down the and track. feather slightly. Mm -hmm. But I don't tend to find that the track can do that enough, unless it's really quite moderate winds. Okay. So, um, because the rudder is so relatively short, once the, once the, the uh, stern is sort of tilting, you've got this wee blade in the water, so mm -hmm. you don't really want to have to try and heave, heave on that. So it's all about keeping the, the rudder uh, under control. So it uh, depends on the, on the conditions, but generally speaking, I would be um, setting the track just a little bit down and then, and then playing the main sheet, basically, mm -hmm. and feathering a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. um, sort of more on the main sheet, in and out, much faster time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> so the other, the other, are you using the main sheet just because it's more reactive rather than the traveller's just a wee bit slower? The, re the traveller's sometimes far too slow and yeah, it just yeah. doesn't, it's not enough. If you get, um, yeah, if you get a gust, you let sheet. the traveller down to the bottom, your main sheet's bar tight and you know, you're still heeling over and you start to screw up and you're having to heave the rudder up to windwards, that, that's when you really slow down. So. So tend to use the, the main sheet to avoid that, mm -hmm. avoid the risk of that, actually. You need to avoid kicker, yeah. kicker. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I guess w with my style using the Traveller more, I took, had to take a purchase out of the Traveller, because it, it did have a, a 3 to 1, um, so I took that out so it was a 2 to 1, um, so that it was uh, it was more re more responsive uh, from that point of view. Um, and I guess uh, earlier I was saying that I sit on the tiller extension, and the reason I sit on the tiller extension is because sometimes I need to use two hands to get that main sheet back in. Um, so, so it allows me just to clamp, clamp the rudder and, uh, uh, and, and put all my, my force and, and pull the, the main sheet in at the same time. So. But I guess from what we hear there, we've, we've each got different styles. So mm -hmm. There's but not when, one when style that's better than the James other. is doing the Traveller, is he sort of doing it from behind his back? From he, the typically side? James will actually do the Traveller through <coughs> the tack. So I'll, do, I'll, hold, I'll ease the main sheet as we go in for the tack, um, sort of six, eight inches. Um, we we'll go for the tack. James will then pull the traveller from the side it's on so up to the it. other side. So he's setting it for the new tack. So that when I come out of the tack, I can pull on the main sheet and the traveller's already up uh, <coughs> to, to help get the, the main. But the, he's not the boom playing the, the traveller on. But on, no, he's not. He's, he's not playing the traveller upwind. No, he's literally he, head out the boat and now uh, legs over the side um, when it uh, when it comes to that. And I say he'll head out the boat. He's he's usually more focused on the what's the what's the boat speed look like? What does the jib uh, trim look like? Um, and is the main halyard and the jib halyard right? Um, so he'll focus on that so that he knows that if he's got that bit right, and sometimes he'll go down and he'll fiddle with the jib and he'll let it out a bit and he'll pull it back in. And he may have done nothing to it, but he turns around to me and tells me that it's good. And, and that's enough for me to psychologically go great. Right. And then I can just concentrate on the telltales and, and, and sail the boat. Because um, I've often found in the past that it's so easy to get my head messed up with, we're not going fast, we're not going fast, we're not going fast. And all it takes is somebody to go down there let it out, pull it back in again, tell me it's all fine, and then psychologically <laughs> I feel it's fine. He may have done absolutely hee-haw, um, but uh, he's made me feel much happier than, than I was but five minutes ago. It, it could be just tweaking it that much. It could be, yeah, yeah you're right, yeah. Because the jib, the, the, for such a tiny little jib, it's yeah. the, the tension is so important. It's so easy to, to stop. Right. Yeah. So you have to have it just, just right. Yeah. 
and I guess that's a mark the jib where it comes out in the cleat yeah. and not on the sheet so that I can see it from the helm position. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we've done that. So I know, yeah. so I feel like I've got a sort of faster setting, that's about as loose as it should be. Maybe a pro maybe you just after tack or we feel slow or you want to speed up um, or there's lots of waves and then our faster position which is everything feels great, we want to pull things as tight as possible and point as high as possible. And exactly the same on the halyard. Yep. We've got a mark on the halyard so that when it's hauled up at the when you've come around the lured mark, um, if somebody gets a little bit overzealous and falls back and pulls it, then they might actually pull on too much. Um, so we've got a mark on the deck and a mark on the halyard so that the halyard goes to the same uh, point every, every time, which means you have to use a shackle at the top to top and the bottom of the jib so that it always goes to the same place. And uh, and if you change your shackle, you need to change your mark. Um, so, uh, but that's certainly what, what we use to make sure that, again, the base setting when you come around uh, to, uh, the lure mark to go up wind is, is there or thereabouts. Um, and if you know that the wind's a little bit stronger than uh, than your base setting, then then you would just pull that just a quarter of an inch uh, beyond the, the mark that's on the deck. Um, so you know, doing simple things like that, so that you know that you're setting yourself up for success, and you're at your your base uh, line. So you've got your jib sheet marks, you've got your halyard marks, you've got your target bow speed. Um, if you can get that sort of stuff um, um, set, so that you're making life easier for yourself, then then you can then work around the. Do I want to go a little bit faster, therefore bear away and, and foot off a little bit, or actually I need a bit of height here, so I'm going to tweak it in a bit and try and get a bit more pointing. So, so we're talking on the break about so you're, you're going <coughs> up when and you're not going four and a half knots, and everyone's looking at each other, having some kind of a checklist so that you go right. How are we going to go quicker? What what do we need to just double check? So, if you're not going as fast <coughs> as you want, what do you what do you guys look at? So to me, <laughs> it's the, what was the first one? Um, jib, jib's always the first one for me because it's so easy to stall the boat um, with with the jib. If it's too tight on the sheet, if it's too tight in the halyard, um, then that's going to absolutely stop you dead, um, and it's going to be difficult to, to, to drive to as well. Mm. Um, so that's the first thing, and that's why we mark it. Mm. Um, and then I guess the next thing is. So if you were going slow, would you would you go right? Let's just ease the jib a tiny bit and and just bear off a, a little bit till we get back up to the speed again. I might, I might, I might do that, yeah. Um, or, but then I guess once I've looked at my jib, I would look at my main, mm -hmm. and I would see if I, have I set my main right or have I actually got it too tight. Have I got the, the, the main in too tight? Have I got it too too hooked? Have I got the boom too high? Is it be, is it beyond the centre line? Um, and then I'd start to think if I've sailed over a bit of seaweed or lobster pot or <laughs> or, or something worse, who knows? But. Um, so I guess that's the sort of things that I would go through, and mm -hmm. and, and then if, if if I've exhausted that, then maybe we just need to ease the sails a bit and get the boat speed back up, mm -hmm. um, and then try and get back to base settings and, and, and see if we can uh, feel more comfortable. So would you then think about your, so when you're saying the jib, you'd look at the halyard and you'd look at the, the sheet as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And that's something that, certainly in a 707, I find that we need to move, we need to adjust the halyard um, much more than the sheet um, with the wind strength. Because mm -hmm. I guess I've got my, I've got my, my my sheet set around the base that I can leave it there, and I'm quite happy with it being there. But actually, there's an awful lot more of the shape that you can control with the sail on the the, the tension of the halyard. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's too tight, then it's a flat blade, and you you'll have height, but you won't have any pace. Um, if it's too loose, then it's going to be all crinkly, as Neil eloquently put earlier. And, uh, and, and and if it's too crinkly, then you might have uh, be able to go low uh, and reasonably fast, um, but you just won't have uh, the height. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's trying to get that happy medium. Um, and I guess one of the things that you know, I, I would recommend is that people just go out and practice what you know, what, is, what looks good and what doesn't. If we can get more than one or two boat or more than two boats uh, together, just practice stopping dead and then accelerate. Um, practice the tacks close to each other and accelerate and, and, and practice with the right, I'll pull on a bit more uh, jib uh, halyard uh, than you, let's see what difference it makes. 